If you've ever seen this movie called Gone in the Night, then you know it was based on a true story of Jacqueline DeWallaby. She was just a little girl, only seven years old when she went missing. On September 10th of 1988, Jacqueline's parents would wake up to find her missing from her bed. Her bedspread was also missing from the bedroom too. So her parents, Cynthia and David, begin searching the house. And that's where David finds the back door standing wide open. Now that wasn't unusual because the grandmother who lived with them was known for leaving the back door open when she came home late. Now in the 80s, it was normal for a little kid like Jacqueline to get up and go next door and play with the neighbor's kids. So David and Cynthia began calling the neighbors to see if anyone had seen her that morning. But unfortunately, none of the neighbors had seen her. So sometime back, David had adopted Jacqueline. David absolutely adored this child. Based on all accounts, he treated her very good. But Jacqueline's biological father didn't really have much to do with her. In the past, he was known for coming around, taking Jacqueline without her parents' permission, and leaving with her. So Cynthia and David didn't know who took their daughter. So they quickly called the police and reported Jacqueline missing. The police came in and started their investigation. Police found a broken window in the basement of the DeWallaby home, and they were told by the parents that the back door had been left open by someone but not them, and that the grandmother had not come home that night. She stayed over with a friend, so it wasn't her who left the door open either. At this point, David and Cynthia just knew their daughter had been abducted, but there was something brewing. A huge political force would push this investigation in the wrong direction. But, unfortunately, this police department would get tunnel vision and focus all their attention on Jacqueline's parents allowing the real killer to go free. So from the get-go, police thought David had kidnapped Jacqueline and unalived her. They thought that he had faked the break-in of the basement window. These police officers had been ordered to take pictures of the crime scene, take pictures of the basement window, take glass from the basement window, dust her fingerprints, take evidence, but they didn't do any of that. Police zoomed in on David and went on a witch hunt. During this time, Cynthia found out she was pregnant. David and Cynthia also had a four-year-old son. Four days after Jacqueline went missing, her body was found at a local dump site located six miles from their home. The medical examiners couldn't determine exactly when she had died. That didn't matter because the police department would arrest David and Cynthia for her murder, with literally no evidence. After they arrested the couple, the state took custody of their four-year-old son. To intimidate Cynthia into turning on David, they stripped her four-year-old son down and took pictures of his nude body. And then the police department lied to the media claiming they had strong evidence against David and Cynthia. The police department told the media that they had pictures of a four-year-old child whose body was covered in wounds because his parents were essaying him and physically abusing him. So the media tells the public the same thing. Cynthia and David knew that was an outright lie that their child was not covered in wounds and they were not abusing him. So Cynthia and David now face a trial full of angry jurors. The prosecution had no evidence during this trial. So Cynthia was released. David was sent to prison for the murder of his daughter. Part 2 coming up. Cynthia fights back.